You know where I am, you know where to find me, and the sound today is going to be horrible. I don't care. Let's get into it. The reason why I decided to do this impromptu video, and it's probably going to post tomorrow. Today is, I think it's Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Um, today there was a young lady, and I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to post the image. So I'm going to show, oh, 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 oh shut up. This is the young lady in question. She did a TikTok and her name is, hold on. Her name is Briley Belly 123 She did a TikTok where she was talking about trying to adjust to the fact that she's working full time, nine to five. And then you add the commute and everything else. And when she gets home, all she has time for is basically taking a shower, putting something in her belly and going to bed. And she doesn't have time to cook because she's exhausted. When I tell you the amount of people that went on to make fun of this young woman and to bash her for being a crybaby, mm, I got a little upset. A little bit more than a little upset. Now, mind you, she specifies that she's on that time of the month. She's about to get that time of the month, so she's already sentimental. If you're not a woman that has a or has had uh, a period you probably don't understand but when women go through their cycles or where when women are in hormone therapy we go through cycles that are very emotional at times it's a pain in the ass so anyway going back to the story I remember and let me give you a little rundown so you understand I went to college for two years in Puerto Rico my dad paid for it all I had to do was get to school at seven o'clock in the morning, which means waking up at five o'clock in the morning to go through traffic just so I could make it to seven o'clock class. On the days that I didn't have seven o'clock class, I still had to do it because my sister was the one driving me to school. My, my first class was on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8.30, but I had to be in school at seven because that was the only way I was gonna get a ride to school. And then I spent the entire day until 5 p.m. because of course, when you are on your first year of school, you usually don't get a perfect schedule. So you end up with a class at seven, a class at one, and then another one at four. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would have one class at 8.30 and one class, I think it was like 2.30. So that was pretty good. Unfortunately, my sister had class until four. So I pretty much spent my entire day in college. That was my first year, my first year and most of my second year in college. The second year wasn't so bad because I got a car. But anyway, let's far fast forward to the United States. I come to live in Maryland. It was the first state that I lived in. And I had work study, which means I had about 15 hours I did in an office at school. I had a, I was working for registration. So during the months where there were registrations going on for students, I had a job, which means I was, I usually had like two months per semester that I didn't work and the rest of the time I was working. And then I had a third job, which was only for the first month, month and a half of every semester because I was working at the, uh, the bookstore, uh, cash register. So I had those three jobs. So technically, uh, every year I had, um, I have allergies. Every year I had three jobs. That did not prepare me at all. I had more college experiences because I ended up graduating from Puerto Rico anyway, but that did not prepare me for my first nine to five. My first nine to five, I was still going to college in Puerto Rico. 12 credits per semester, including summer. And it was easier because A, the college was half a mile from my house in the same street. My job was a mile in the opposite direction and I walked all of this. And my daughter's school was two miles down in the direction of my job. So what I would do is I would go, take her, walk her to school, then walk to my job, then go to college, then come home. And my dad would take care of her. He would bring her home and, and have her do her homework and whatnot. When I got home, all I had to do was hang out with my daughter and, and, and have peace. That changed when I graduated from college and I moved, um, my husband came back from the military. We moved into an apartment 
And that was my first official job with me handling everything. And I can tell you that the adjustment was a pain in the butt. That first month, I I was, oh my God, I, I think about it and I want to cry. Okay? Now, I don't know where people think that it's normal to work over 40 hours and to have no life because you have to make money. We have normalized the stupidity that corporate America's right and that we need to kill ourselves for corporate Amer America. I will never go back to corporate America because no matter how good your job is, there is always one department that you have to deal with uh, all the time or one group of people or whatever, or one team that is always going to give you headaches every day of your life. And here is my issue. And this is why it bothered me so much. People are bashing on this girl because she was honest about how miserable she is. Not because of the job, because she actually likes the job. At least that's how it sounds from the video. But because between, basically the commute is about it's over an hour. And she doesn't make enough money to work in the city where she's uh, to live in the city where she works so she does have to commute and I have another question for you people why do we have to make city living so expensive that people cannot afford to get a one bedroom two bedroom apartment in the same city where they work now I don't know about you all but I live in Florida and when I moved to Maryland the beginning of my marriage 36 35 36 years ago um, we could get an apartment, a one bedroom apartment for $500 in Florida, in Maryland, I'm sorry. And my husband kept trying to get transferred to Florida because the same, actually no, a two bedroom apartment was $350. If you find a $350 apartment in Florida right now, and I realize when you adjust for inflation, that is still not $2,500, which is what the average two-bedroom apartment costs here. Make that make sense. I pay $1,800 for a two-bedroom apartment right now. And we have a storage unit because we cannot fit everything in here. I came from a two-bedroom apartment that was a lot more comfortable, but it was also going to be $2,300 for the next year. And it had gone up $300 for the last two years that we were trying well that we the first the year that i the last year that i lived there i didn't realize that they had raised my rent by three hundred dollars on the second year i was paying a lot of attention when i saw that there was 300 more for the same apartment with no fixing i was like yeah i'm not staying here so now i live in a building that is about 20 years older than that one that is obviously has issues because I have doors that when I moved here, they open fine and now I'm having trouble. I get locked into my own apartment with the door unlocked all the time because I can't open the door. I have a closet where I have the washer and dryer. And when you open the dryer door, the closet door is right there. And it used to be that, you know, if you forgot and you didn't push it all the way, you would hit it. Now when you hit it, no matter what you do. So obviously there's issues here with tilting and whatnot. I live next to a lake, so I'm not surprised. But here's the thing that you have to understand. We are bashing this young lady over something that shouldn't be normal. You do realize that the only animal in the entire animal kingdom that pays to live here is us, right? And not only that, but you have normalized that corporate America determines how much you should make and how many hours you should work. There were people that were making fun of her by saying, well, I work 12 hour days. Good for you. You're an idiot. You should actually work to enjoy your life, not live to work. Because guess what happens to people that live to work? Me included. We get sick, and then when you can finally retire, you're a mess of diseases and conditions, and you cannot enjoy your life. Think about that the next time you're making fun of a poor girl that's just 
expressing, venting her frustration. And look at me, I just went back and looked at the actual TikTok and I was very happy to see that at least in the beginning, I didn't go too far down, but at least in the beginning people were being very, very nice to her and were very much agreeing that, you know, her feelings are valid. But His Royal Flyness, the timber man, on Twitter had something to say and I asked for his permission and he said yes, of course. And he said, none of us asked to be here. None of us consented to this hellhole. These feelings are valid. Like, let's acknowledge this and try to make the world better instead of making fun of them. This is why nothing changes. We want others to suffer what we suffer. Well, F that. Now, the reason why I decided to read that particular answer, I saw a couple more people being very upset by the way she was being treated on Twitter. But the reason why I picked his royal flyness uh, um, post is because two things stand up to me. This is not the first time I say this. I don't understand why people want everybody else to suffer if they suffer. I don't subscribe to that. I have always believed that I want to leave things better for the next person over. And the only uh, time I haven't done that was there was this particular job where people were horrible to work for and I just got up and left and didn't care what happened because I've had it. Other than that, most of the places I try to train somebody to do my stuff so that if they have to come in and replace me, be it for vacation, for sickness, or because I leave, they can go ahead and take care of the place and not feel like I felt when I got the job. Because normally, I would have to say out of the six last jobs I remember, I had to figure it out on my own. And I hated that feeling, which is why I didn't do it to somebody else except for one of them. However... In normal life, in daily life, I want people to be just as um, as good or better than I am for whatever situation. And this particular attitude of, well, I'm working 12-hour days, so why are you complaining, is horrible. The second thing, and I did not show the tweet because the person had a private account, but this person brought up a very important point, and it is, we're all allies for mental health until somebody decides to say something and be vulnerable and we go ahead and we bash them for it. Y'all have to make up your mind. Either you're in favor of people having the, 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 the audacity, for lack of a better word, of actually exposing themselves and showing all the good, the bad, and the ugly, or you just want happy-go-lucky and screw everything else. Either way, you're wrong. Because at the end of the day, we're living under circumstances where the middle class has been squeezed out of life, basically. We have situations where the rich haven't figured this out yet, but eventually they're not going to be rich anymore because they're trying to squeeze every single ounce of life out of humans. And if there's no humans to purchase your stuff or use your services, What? how are you going to make money? But they haven't figured that out yet because unfortunately Americans, I'm talking about America specifically, United States, because that's what I know. But Americans have this habit of thinking in the short term and not in the long term. And so they haven't figured that out yet. So those are the feelings that I had to include here at the end. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.